Alright, hello. So, Halloween is getting very close. In fact, it's only about two days away now. And so I thought I'd go into a bit of work with a Halloween-ish themed map. And this time we're looking at the living versus the dead, where the game progresses until all of the living have become dead, or all of the dead can no longer kill the living because they're trapped in some way, which is really rare, so you can pretty much assume you're all going to die. However, uh, there are rules here, so you don't have to watch this video if you're only after the rules. However, I will go over a bit of strategy and about uh, how the map is working a bit, so consider this video developer commentary. You don't need it to play the game, but if you want, you can watch it anyway. And up top here, you can see that we have the directions, very cryptic, living that way, dead these ways. Um, again, the rules. And basically, underground here, in the deads area, we have their caskets. And the idea is that the dead can only spawn during the night. If they're still walking during uh, the day, they must be dealt with, but once they have been killed again, they will respawn back here because their bed is obstructed by the way it has been constructed, and therefore they won't be able to spawn in their bed, they will spawn underground, and they will have to wait until night comes again in order, in order to begin walking in. So they'll constantly respawn until the end of the night. And you can see all these little things in the center are beds, and we can actually right click them here, get in, and in SMP you'll be able to immediately leave bed. And even though that sets your spawn point, you won't have to worry about it because you're obstructed and you'll spawn down here anyway, as I've said. And in all of these chests that you can see, we have clocks. And that just, of course, helps the dead tell what time it is because it's very difficult when you're dead. And then up top, we have the living's entrance. And if you don't want the dead given the chance to cheat by simply walking out this way and ignoring their bed during the daytime, you can just have ops spawn the living into the play area near their house instead of having them spawn with everyone else and going up. That way, the only way to really get out is if you blatantly cheat by, you know, smashing open your bed or something like that. But anyway, uh, you can just stick to the honor system if you'd like. So just to demonstrate, we can jump in our bed here. We spawn inside of our coffin. And then we're, once we're done, we can climb out. And of course, there isn't that animation in SMP when you're actually playing because the living don't have beds and, well, it is against the rules for the living to sleep in caskets. So um, you can pretty much assume that you'll be getting in your bed and then immediately leaving during the night and going after the living's brains. Uh, so, of course, to get after those brains, you want to exit your grave here and then we have our house and this is basically full of defenses to prevent zombies from smashing your skull in so for example here we have some pistons and that just prevents zombies from climbing up onto your porch and into your house however if they do get past these pistons this door is only wooden and they can easily open it however uh, they cannot open our iron doors which are used for shutters you can pretend these are wooden shutters and they're just not able to open them or you can just assume they're iron shutters however you want to think of it it doesn't matter either way iron shutters gameplay good mechanic so there you have it you can open them and attack zombies outside that are trying to get out your uh, window here but of course that's a bit risky and the idea is zombies can punch through these iron doors and they won't be there anymore. They don't drop because if you punch something iron instead of mining it with a pickaxe, it disappears forever and you have to replace it. And on to replacing, we have repair modules, what I like to call them at least. And repair modules consists of one of three things, and that is blocks of iron, blocks of gold, which are weaker than blocks of iron whenever you're using your fist, so it takes less time to mine by punching, and glowstone which is really quick to break, but all three of these will not produce anything when punched to death. So if a zombie destroys one of your repair modules, they won't come back. And hopefully uh, you will go with the rules that zombies can't take things from chests, because that's a bit cheap. But anyway, there you go. Zombies break stuff, it doesn't come back. So if you were to take one of those repair modules, there are a few things you can do with them. One, if you have a glowstone repair module, you can break it down using your pickaxe, which you have as a living in your tool shed here. 
There you go, pickaxe, shears, buckets, etc. So you can break it open for some alchemy, alchemy materials if you so choose to spend your time on uh, alchemy, or you can use it for cheap things. For example, we have an iron door here that whenever it's closed protect, protects our power conduit for our water pump. So you can use your glowstone as a water pump power conduit. And uh, because it's already protected by this iron door and the iron door for our fence here, you won't have to worry about it getting broken immediately. So it's a really cheap way to get a power conduit in, and the idea behind power conduits is that it's basically just a block detector. We have a redstone uh, repeater here and redstone uh, dust here, and if we place a block between it, it'll detect, and that'll act as what I like to call a power conduit, a conduit for power. And if you uh, look up conduit, it should be pretty obvious how that's supposed to uh, work in theory. And uh, the idea is that you can't have irrigation in your farm unless you have a power conduit installed. So, for example, if we put a bit of glowstone here, we have irrigation, and there. And farmland is a bit scarce as well, so you have to choose what you want to grow and at what times you have to prioritize. And if the zombie, of course, were to come in here and break that, you would no longer have irrigation. And therefore, it's defended by this iron door, another iron door, and the power conduit itself. But if you run out of iron blocks to make iron doors, and all your iron doors are destroyed, you can use gold blocks or glowstone, if you really feel like doing that, to make a barricade. You can place a glowstone and iron and gold blocks anywhere you want to use as a barricade but of course then you can't use it for other things like crafting because you can break down iron blocks into their iron bars to make anything you want including tools armors weapons etc but of course there's always risks because every time you do that that's one less power conduit that you can have and that also is necessary for defenses say power conduit defenses and defenses includes all the iron doors that you see that aren't open very close by and the fence gate here so it controls this sticky piston here that's holding back our fence for the chickens it controls the barn fence or the barn iron door here and it controls our iron door here for the farm so the problem is if that is broken and you no longer have power all three of those are going to open no matter what you have them set, them set to so we can, uh, while we have power, come in here, open up the fence if we like, and it's a bit risky because the chickens get out, but if you have wheat, you can lure them back in, and the idea is it's uh, much more risky than the other farm area, so if you want, you can move your chickens into the barn area, but zombies, if they are dumb enough to go in there, you can trap and it's the only place that you can trap zombies because otherwise just to ensure people don't get stuck accidentally and to make it uh, not so easy to win the game we have these stone pressure plates here which allow you to get out if the door closes on you so that uh, if you have someone inside operating the controls they can close you in and uh, secure the place without you needing to worry about anything extra after you get out and if we were to flip the switch now for the farm and the barn then everything will be closed up we have everything all secure but if a zombie breaks through our iron door here and comes down into our basement we see the power indicator lights on now but if they break our power conduit it's off and all of our defenses are down including this area here all our doors and on the inside we can no longer activate our porch defenses and of course the zombies as I've said can just break down this door and get in at that point so this is of vital importance that you keep power to your house so you want to defend it as much as possible so of course you have to strategize on exactly what you want to use as I've said you can use glowstone for well defended areas if you have plenty of defense if you've built plenty of barricades you have doors all over then you don't really need to uh, worry about using expensive power conduits like iron blocks and you can just go with glowstone which breaks easily because it's defended well enough already but there you go everything is a sacrifice if you use iron blocks which are strong or gold blocks you're sacrificing potential tools and that sort of thing and um, on the tools I suppose 
we have the tools and the shit I said, and that gives you a bit of progression as well because you are required to have that to quickly break through cobwebs and stuff to get string for a bow. So there are some resources which are not as easy to tell. These uh, string here, these cobwebs that is, you can't get to them, but there's cobwebs in the chest and such. And basically you would knock these down and it would take a really long time to do by hand so you want to prioritize getting those tools and inside we have our first set of armor and our first two iron swords so if you want more than that you're gonna have to sacrifice some repair modules and here just some storage area a bit of junk and some empty storage areas on the rooms to the left and right nothing too important and you have a good sniping position right here and uh, zombie chicken apparently and uh, as a last minute everything's gone to hell and you are in a period of extreme defense where you have nothing but yourself and a bow or something like that we have a little bit of fenced off area here where you can snipe zombies coming up your steps so I've tried to plan for sort of end, end game-ish type scenarios and uh, we have, of course, our water here, which is enough water currently, as long as cauldrons work, uh, for up to three bottles of water for alchemy. And our brewing stand here, and in here we have some materials for alchemy as well. Not all the materials, some of them are harder to get than others. For example, you would have to go to the graveyard to get um, some eyeballs. So if we were to go over here, we have not just the normal graves here but we also have some chests and those contain some dead zombie flesh so we got some rotten flesh spider eye fermented spider eye that sort of thing some um, very last resort foods and some stuff for alchemy same thing with glowstone you'd have to sacrifice a glowstone repair module in order to get glowstone dust that kind of thing so it, everything has its trade-offs and then you got your window so that you can observe what doors are opened and that sort of thing and uh, keep some eyes open for zeds and you got bowls in case you have uh, some mushrooms on hand again one of the more hidden materials on the map there is a secret or two on this map as well which you'll have to find yourself um, let's see here we have some miscellaneous tools and such such as our torches and stuff like that of course you can make more but um, every tool you make is going to sacrifice sticks every torch you make if you really need torches for some reason is going to sacrifice more sticks every arrow is going to sacrifice sticks so there's a big trade-off bet between tools um, power conduits arrows that sort of thing so lots of strategy to go on in this game mode and uh, I hope to see some interesting emergent strategies which I haven't been able to foresee and over here by the way is an infinite water bit this is a water tap as you can see and that'll give you infinite water down here as long as it has power in the pump by using a power conduit here so uh, if you want to not cheat and not make infinite water sources uh, by yourself which I advise I advise using that sort of rules it's my vanilla rules but there you go you can change them if you want but you'd have to constantly be getting new buckets of water to refill here for your um, extra bit of alchemy real close by. Of course, you can just take all your bottles out there and refill, but everything has its trade-offs between time and all that sort of thing. You'll need to work together quite a bit to uh, get everything you want done on the first day, because that's the whole idea. On the first day, you're waiting till night comes and you have lots of stuff to do. Everything, as you've seen, is not in the same area. We have this stuff here, that's great and all, but all the important stuff is elsewhere, kind of separate. We have our seeds there, etc. Down below here we have cold storage with a little bit of food down there. And uh, you're going to have to prioritize what you want to get done in the first day and subsequent days in your allotted time before the zombie invasion outbreak thing of doom begins. And uh, let's see if there's anything else. I don't really think there is. So, um... Yeah, again, I'll have this in the description for you to download, and the download will include both versions, the version uh, with the trees everywhere, to give Zeds more hiding places and to make a bit more strategy involved, and the version without so much trees as a clearing, 
And uh, I guess I will see you next time. And if you're watching this very recently, in the month of October, then happy Halloween from Ohiakyo. Thank you.